morning. Good morning. Morning, Jessica. Hi. I'd love to see some faces instead of black squares. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. What? Oh, hello. Hi. No one else wants to turn their camera on? <laughs> Shy group. <laughs> Susan, I see you down there. All right, that's fair. Hi, Susan. <laughs> You're muted. I'm here. I'm just heating up my tea. Perfect. All right. So, yeah, turn off the waiting room. All right. So, this is Stay Top of Mind with Smart Plans. It's been a heavily requested class that I teach again. So, has anyone used Smart Plans yet or tried them out? No, no, cool. I did try, I did a test one. Good. And it worked, People like I tested it on another email I had for me and it worked, but I'm terrified of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're not so scary once you get started with them. Hey, Travis. Hi, good morning. Hi. All right, so let me just share my screen here. Um, All right, so like I said, today we're gonna to be going over smart plans, um, which are really the automation part of command. So it's what allows you to um, set up different plans essentially to send text messages, send emails, um, create tasks for you. Um, and it's really just designed to give you that leverage to run some of the processes that you're doing every day in the background. So you're not spending a whole lot of time on it. Um, so we're gonna go through so the things you need to have set up in your command before we start, um, some things in your contacts that you should have filled in before you start using smart plans so you're able to use them to their full potential. Um, and then we'll go through some different suggestions of smart plans that you should be using um, and show you how to add them and customize them and things like that. So if you have any questions as we're going through, we're a pretty small group, so just unmute and interrupt me. Um, I might not see the chat, so best if you say it out loud and then I'll notice your question. <laughs> okay. All right, so first thing is your step one is your settings. So there's a few things that you'll want to go in and make sure you have set up properly. So to get to your settings, you click on your name here at the top right and then go to settings. I'm going to scroll past everything all the way to the bottom. Um, and the first thing is this command email that you see here. So command has an email service that it's going to send your emails with. Um, you have 5,000 free email sends per month. That's usually good enough for most people. Um, if you're sending more than that, there are options to add additional email sends, but I haven't encountered anyone that's gone over the 5,000 yet. So uh, if you do run into that issue, just let me know. But we're going to click on manage next to command email and here you're mainly just wanting to check that the reply to email is the correct email for you so if your smart plan sends an email to someone and they reply to your email this is the address it's going to go to so if it's going to some random email that you don't use anymore you'll want to make sure that you change that you'll have various different ones um, your personal email, which is your recovery email, should show up there. Just make sure it's not set to that if you're not checking that that often. Um, best practice is to use your KW email or whatever one you're using for your business. Okay. The sender name is also important. It should just be filled in with your name, but just make sure that it is. Um, that's who the email is going to come from when it appears in the person's inbox. And then it will show you your usage here at the bottom of how many emails you've sent this month. Okay. 
The other important thing to note here is Twilio. So Twilio is the texting service that's built into command, which is what allows you to send text messages using your smart plans. It is a paid service, it's not free, um, but it's, I did the calculation this morning, I think it's $4.30 a month for 300 texts that you can send, um, or 300 credits. So the main thing with that is you do have to subscribe, otherwise you can't send text messages from command, you have to just manually pick up your phone and send a text message. Um, the other important thing to note about Twilio is when you sign up for it, you're going to be given, or you get to choose a phone number. This will not be the same number that you use on your cell phone um, because your cell phone number is already registered with a provider. You can't have it registered with Twilio as well. So you're going to have two phone numbers. There's easy ways to explain that. A lot of people will call the Twilio their business number and call your cell phone your personal number. Um, and then you're just using this for the automated texts that are going to go out. If you're using it to follow up with people, because you can use smart plans to follow up with leads if you're doing Facebook ads and things like that, um, you know, they're not going to know the difference, whether it's your real phone number or not. They get a text from this number. You can still text back and forth with them through the command app or through command. Um, you can set it up so if they call that phone number, your phone still rings. So to the person who's receiving the text from you, it's like it's a normal phone number. Then you can give them your personal number, which is your actual cell phone number. Once you've started building that relationship and it feels kind of special because they think they've gotten some inside contact with you. Okay, so that's the main thing that, um, not complaint, but issue that people have with it is that you can't use your own phone number. Um, so there is ways to explain it. There's actually smart plans that we'll look at that sort of introduce your Twilio number to people to say, hey, this is my business number. Make sure you save it in your phone. I'll text you from this from time to time, that sort of thing. Um, so there's definitely ways around that. Any questions about Twilio before we move on? Around the phone number setup, that's in settings, I guess, is it? Yeah, so you would click subscribe in Marketplace first. It's gonna bring you to the KW Marketplace it will show you the different plans. Of course, that 300 credit plan for this is American, so it was like $4 and something cents. Um, you can increase from there, but you just click buy now and it's gonna you know, choose your plan, do all that. And then when you get back to command, you manage your subscription there and choose your number. Um, so you do get to choose the number, you can scroll through, you can enter different ones, but um, yeah, that all goes through command once you've purchased the subscription. And in order to for somebody to call you on that, whatever 902702 number or whatever it works out to be do you have to set that up in settings or is it something on your phone you um know? it would be in your command settings so okay. when you go into the manager twilio subscription there's an option to forward um all of your calls to your cell phone okay. and just is that a um a monthly subscription in terms of you can cancel at the end of a month or do you have to subscribe for a year? No, so it's monthly um, and the credits do roll over, which is nice. So let's say you signed up this month and you get your 300 credits, but you only send hundred text messages. Next month, you now have 500 credits because they keep building up and building up. Okay. Um, and if you do get to a point where you just have so many credits that like you don't need to keep buying more credits every month, there is, I think it says it down here. Um, I saw it somewhere. You can pay a dollar per month to keep your number active without adding new credits every month instead of. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you get into those bigger plans. Sometimes if you take a break from sending texts, they'll start building up really quickly and you won't need to keep adding them for a while. So yeah, mm -hmm. you can definitely pause your billing for a dollar per month and then just keep using your credits without okay. keeping your number. Perfect. Thank you. All right, all good on email and text set up. Right. Next thing I want to talk about is your contacts. Um, so in order to actually send smart plans to people, you have to have people in your contacts. That's sort of step well, step two. Step one is your settings. Um, but there's just a few things that I want to point out that will increase your functionality for smart plans. 
Um, so of course, having people in your contacts, that's the main thing, but you need a way to contact them. So either a phone number or an email, um, depending on which method you're using. If you're only sending email smart plans, you need to have emails. If you have a number and not an email, it's not gonna do much for you. Um, same thing with Twilio. If you're only sending texts, you wanna make sure you have a cell phone number. So just opened up a contact here. Um, you can see I have a phone number on this one and an email address. So those are the really big pieces that you wanna make sure that you have. Some other things that will make your life a lot easier is if you have tags added to your contacts. Now this will help if there's specific reasons you're sending smart plans. Maybe there's specific groups of people you want to send smart plans to. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. Maybe you have a past client tag and you're doing an event that you want to invite all your past clients to. It's really easy to send that one smart plan to all of those people without having to choose them one by one if you have them tagged appropriately. So just think of that when you are setting up your database or preparing to send smart plans. It will allow you to send it in bulk to every single person who has that particular tag. Okay. The other part is something we don't talk about a whole lot, which is neighborhoods. So down here on a contact, you'll see this add neighborhood button. You can see I've added three to this contact. There is a smart plan that we'll talk about called the neighborhood nurture, um, which is something that will send a regular email updating on that area. So I do have an example here I'll pull up. So this is an email that I get with those three neighborhoods. Um, it's a neighborhood report. So it has the stats for the past 30 days, some recently listed properties, and then a link to explore, which will bring them to your KW agent site to look at that area and what's actually on the market. If you have multiple, I have three neighborhoods on that one. That's why it's showing three different sections here. Um, so that's an automated email. It's just going to go out on a regular basis. In order to use those, you do need to have the neighborhood associated to the contact before you add them to that smart plan. Now, the big caveat with neighborhoods is there's not a lot of them. <laughs> so depending where you are or where the person is that you want to update them on, you may or may not be able to do it. So if I click on add neighborhood and I'll do find on map here and zoom in on Nova Scotia. That's what we got. <laughs> so there's not a whole lot of them. I mean, if you're outside of Halifax or Sydney or Charlottetown, again, there's really not much. Like if you were in the Valley, there's no neighborhoods there to use that automated system with. Um, as you scroll in, some more will appear. A majority of HRM is there. Weirdly, Bedford's not, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> So when you scroll down or zoom in here, you'll see there's just kind of a big area that there's no neighborhood to click here. Um, so like I said, they're very limited. The ones that are there are great. Um, they're very specific. I mean, you have like Eastern Passage and Cow Bay, Stillwater Lake. So there's a lot of different ones. Um, but again, it just depends on where the people are that, that you need that information for. Okay. If you're in an area that doesn't have a neighborhood, there is another method. You have to use your KW agent site, it's the whole thing, whole separate training. Um, but if that's something that you're interested in, just send me an email. And you can use like Collab Center and things like that to be more specific through Paragon with those update emails. But if the neighborhood's here, then that's great. <laughs> okay, so I don't talk about those a whole lot just because they're so limited. Um, Again, HRM's there, but not much more. Okay, so those are the main things. Um, when I go to edit this contact, two other things that you may want to just be mindful when you're collecting information or putting your clients in here is under about, you can fill in a birthday and you can fill in a home anniversary. There are also smart plans that can text people on their birthday or send you a task telling you that so-and-so has a home anniversary coming up next week, you better go grab a bottle of wine and drop it off. Okay, so in order to have those things automated, you need to have these dates filled in. Okay, this will make a lot more sense when we look at the smart plans, but just things to keep in mind when you're filling in your database. Okay. Jessica, yeah. the, you can, um... You might have one and not the other, although 
you should have both, but can they be emailed as well and not just necessarily texted like the home anniversary and birthday? Um, so technically, yes. <laughs> um, there's an automated birthday smart plan that's in there that's not overly editable. You can change what the messaging says, but it only uses text messages. Um, if you want it to email on their birthday, it's a little bit more manual. You're kind of adding each person and scheduling that to go out. Um, if you want the system to just say, you know, I know there's a birthday on this day, so I'm going to send a text and you don't have to do anything else besides add everyone to the same smart plan. It does have to be a text message, unfortunately. So I will look at that, but yeah, there is manual ways to do it, but with the automated smart plan, it does only use texts. Um, the home anniversary one only creates tasks. It doesn't email or text. So it's just reminding you. Okay. Sorry, just for clarification though, for a smart plan, like if I had a closing yesterday, I could set up a home anniversary, set it up that the email goes out I go manually in and set it up, but it can go out one year from yesterday, right? Yeah. 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 You can choose the date that it goes. E by email, like a, a design or Canva thing that's good sent to them, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So Thank I'll show you. you how to schedule them so that they go on a specific day as well. All right. All good with the contact? Yeah. All right. Well, let's dive into smart plans. <laughs> so smart plans is the fourth icon down on your left side toolbar. It just looks like a little to-do list. <laughs> and this is what it will look like when you first come in. It may look different for you if you've never used smart plans before. You probably don't have anything listed down here. It will also look different if you're on a team or part of a team. With If you're in your team account, you're not going to see this library tab up here. And this is going to say team smart plans and not my smart plans. Okay. With teams, the rainmaker or the leader of the team has to create the smart plans for you to use. You can't create your own. Um, so if sending your own smart plans is something you'll want to do, you'll just want to make sure you're in your personal um, command account or your rainmaker of the team has set up smart, the smart plan for you to use. If you're an individual agent, this is what your screen will look like. Um, so you have my smart plans up at the top, and then you have a library. You'll also have a create button over on the right hand side. Um, so create would just be to create a smart plan from scratch. You know exactly what you want the smart plan to look like, you know, all the texts and the emails and the tasks you want to create, and you just want to start it from scratch. That's what this create button is for. But you don't have to do that. We have a library of smart plans, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I guarantee you there's a smart plan built for whatever thing you're looking to do. At least for the most part, you may need to customize it a little bit more. Um, but we have a library of smart plans that you can search and choose from. So I'm going to click on the library just to start there. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm just going to skip this featured section, and we're going to look at the Keller Williams section. Okay. There's two types of smart plans you'll find in the library. There's the Keller Williams one, where you'll see the author here is Keller Williams. These are pre-built smart plans that KW has built. Um, and then there's the other ones. You'll see a different name as the author. So this one up here is Marty Miller. And those are agent-built smart plans. So every agent within KW can create their own smart plans. Like I said, you can click Create and start it from scratch. And then they can choose to publish it and share it with everyone else in KW. So those are the two types. The Keller Williams ones are a little less editable, more automated. Um, the agent built ones, which we'll talk about in a second, have a lot more customization that comes with them. Okay. So a few of the Keller Williams ones to point out, this bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. Again, that's coming back to those neighborhoods. So if you do have someone who's in a neighborhood that exists and you want to send them those updates, you would add the neighborhood to the contact and then you need to add this smart plan and put the contact on it, okay? So if I click on view steps for the neighborhood nurture, it's sending that email with the update. It waits 14 days and then it repeats. So every 14 days, they're just getting this neighborhood update. Okay. There's nothing you can edit in that one, like this email. Where did it go here? 
Like I can't even see this to change the text or anything. It just goes. So just keep that in mind. Um, yes, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Uh, if you were to send you something like this by weekly neighborhood one, do they have the option to opt out? They can unsubscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So at the bottom of the email, probably, oh yeah, right here. To unsubscribe, please click here and they can okay. unsubscribe from it. Thanks. Yeah. They might also message you and just say, stop sending me these. And you would just go to the contact and remove them from that smart plan. Another really good one in the Keller Williams ones is the quarterly call plan. So this is probably the simplest smart plan that exists in the entire library. If I click on view steps here, it is a task telling you to call someone. It's waiting for 90 days and then it repeats. So every 90 days you get a reminder to reach out to Joe Smith. This is great for just keeping in touch with people. Maybe it's a client that you just closed a deal with and you wanna be reminded every three months to check in. You just add them to this quarterly call plan and you're gonna get that task on a recurring basis. Okay. If you wanna do it every month instead, when you add the smart plan, you can change the delay. So you can do 30 days or 60 days okay. or once a year. <laughs> but this one's intended for 90 days. So that's a really simple one if you know you don't have a whole lot to send out right now, but you just wanna be reminded to keep in touch with people, add everyone to your database and add them all to this quarterly call plan. They don't actually receive anything from you, you're just getting a task. So it's a good way to sort of introduce yourself to smart plans and practice them and see how they work because nothing actually goes out to anyone. Okay. To keep scrolling here, you'll see the birthday smart plan. So that is the one that will automatically text people on their birthday. Click a few steps here. Um, there's a few more things than just the text though. So we can see up here, it says it's a six day smart plan. So six days before their birthday, you're gonna get a task that says, send, send a handwritten note. You can change what the task says. You could say, you know, so-and-so has a birthday in six days. You can change this to be whatever you want that reminder to say. Then it waits for four days and then it creates a task telling you to call them. So that's gonna be the day before their birthday. Then it waits for a day, creates another task for you. It says send a social post. In my head, I think that's right on their Facebook wall, <laughs> not like create a post on your own business page for their birthday. And then it sends the text that says happy birthday. And of course you can change that text and what the wording says as well. So this, like I said, it only allows you to do the text. You can't change this to an email. It's only gonna be text message. Um, but even if you don't sign up for Twilio, you could still add this smart plan. You're still gonna get all of these tasks right up till the day of their birthday. And then the text just isn't gonna send if you don't have Twilio. So you could use this solely for the reminders. And when you get that first reminder that they have a birthday coming up, maybe you schedule an email to go to them if you want to do that. So that's the birthday one. Really good if you are using Twilio because it just texts them and you don't have to remember anything. <laughs> uh, there's an open house follow-up one in here and a home anniversary. That's another good one. So that's the one, if you have the home anniversary filled in on your contact, it's going to create a task for you a week before their home anniversary saying to send a gift or drop off a card or whatever you want it to say. Okay. So again, this one doesn't actually send anything to anyone. It's just tasks being created. Any questions about those particular smart plans? No? I'm Jessica. Yeah. So um, under each one, how do you know if the other person gets a text or is just for us? Um, so when you click on view steps, you'll see, um, if it says send text or send email, you know, they're going to get something. If okay. It just has touch tasks or phone calls. Then those are just tasks being created for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So again, those are the less editable. You can change the wording in the text or the tasks, but you can't change the order of them or change a text to an email. It's really just what you see is what you get with those ones. But then we have the rest of the library of the agent created smart plans. So up here, you do have a search bar. So if there's something that you want to automate, maybe it's you know following up with your Facebook ad leads, maybe it's following up after closing day, you can search for those keywords and find other smart plans that other agents have built and add them and use them for yourself. Um, so the best one, I'll, or the first one I'll suggest is new to Keller Williams. So if you're a newer agent just getting your database set up and you want to be able to send an email or a text to everyone in your database saying, you know, I'm on this new career journey, I've joined Keller Williams, there are smart plans in here with all of the wording and all of that already in there that you can add. Okay, so just search new to Keller Williams. There's 37 results. There are some ways to narrow that down so that you're getting just the quality results. Um, so you'll see up here we have the filter. So I can click on filter and there's various different things that you can do. Um, I like to filter by the rating. So maybe I just wanna see the four and five stars. So if something has no ratings, I don't wanna see it. Okay, I can filter that way and click results. And now I've narrowed it down to six. Okay. The ratings are really nice because this is showing you how many people have downloaded this smart plan. So how many other agents have used it and if they actually like it. They've taken the time to go and rate it. So you know people are using it, it's been valuable to them and they've rated it. So I like filtering by the ratings because then you just know it's actually being used and not just some random thing in there because everyone can publish smart plans. You might have, you might find the same smart plan like six times because someone has downloaded it and then republished it. So that's why I like the, the filter there. So I've narrowed it down to six. Um, the good ones that I like personally are the first two by George Kelly. Um, so there's a new license option. So if you're brand new to the industry or if you've, you're new to Keller Williams, but you're not new to the industry, you've just switched over. Okay. On the new to Keller Williams, the new license one, I'm just gonna click on view steps to see what that smart plan entails. And then we have our overview here. It used to give you a full preview of the email, but it does not now, but I'll add the smart plan so you can see it. Um, but the first thing it does is sends an email to the contact. It waits for three days. And then it sends a text message. This is actually a good introduction for your Twilio number. If you are going to use Twilio, you can see um, it says, as I begin my real estate journey, I want to make sure you had my contact info saved in your phone. This text number is tied directly to my business. So save it in your phone, basically. <laughs> um, so that's a good way to introduce this different number that they may not be used to hearing from you from. Okay. Then it delays for six days and then it creates a task telling you to call them to check in. Now that you've sent them an email, you sent them a text and now it's telling you to check in personally. And then the last step here is really nice. It then just adds them to your quarterly call plan so that every 90 days you just get a reminder to call them. Okay, so by adding this one smart plan, it will also get you to add the quarterly call plan. Um, you could send an email, a text, and be reminded to call them and get a reminder every 90 days just by clicking add smart plan and adding something to it. So when we get reminders, where do we where do we receive them? Is that like on the homepage in the command? Correct. So that's your tasks applet. Um, so right on the homepage, you have a widget that has your tasks. On that command app, you have all your tasks like due today, due soon, past due. Um, and then you have the actual tasks section where you can go and see like a full list of what's coming up. But yeah, the homepage, you can get notifications as well if you have that set up of, I think it's like a daily digest of your tasks. So it tells you, you know, you have two tasks due today and you click it and it will show you what tasks you have to do. Um, so those are like different ways to, to get notified about that. Um, but mainly at yeah, the homepage of command or your app is where the best place to see them. Okay. So if I want to add this smart plan, I'm gonna click on add smart plan. You can see because this also links to the quarterly call plan, it wants to make sure I have that smart plan also added. 
So if you don't, it would tell you to add it here, but I already have it. So I would just click on download. And now it's going to show up under my smart plans, this tab up here. Okay, we're gonna go back to that and I'll show you how to edit it, but I just wanna show you a few other smart plans before we move on. Um, another really good one, if you are doing any Facebook ads, is to search for Facebook lead follow-up. Again, there's a lot of different ones depending on what you're looking to do. Some of them, so this one's just calls. It says calls, Facebook lead follow-up. This one's just texts. There is one that is just emails somewhere in here. Um, so if you were just using Twilio or just sending emails, you can find smart plans that meet that criteria. Okay. There's one, let's see here. There we go. This Facebook lead follow-up, KWUD. Um, I've looked at that one. I think it's the best laid out one. Um, so when you click on view steps for that, again, if someone was to click on your Facebook ad and you get a lead from it, you're first going to get a task telling you to call them and it texts them right away. It waits for four days, sends them an email and another text, waits for two days, tells you to call them, waits for six days, tells you to te or text them. Um, so this one's a lot longer. You can see this one actually runs for 31 days and not six days like the other. Um, and that's mainly because Facebook leads are much harder to convert. So it has a lot more touches and more times that you're reaching out to them versus just introdu introducing yourself as a real estate agent. You don't want to like send them a text every single day. Right? But a lead is something you want to be more on top of and sending more frequent communications. Question, Jessica? Yeah. In terms of editing let's say this smart plan, mm -hmm. um, if you wanted the delay to be two days, can you edit that or make it Absolutely. longer? Absolutely, yeah. Or delete it altogether? Yeah, yeah. So I'll just add this smart plan as well. So you have our Facebook lead follow-up, click download, and then it will show up under my smart plans. Okay, so like I said, anything you might want to send a message for, there's probably a smart plan. Um, and even if it's just a single email you want to send, it at least helps you think of the wording and, you know, the way that other agents are doing it as well. Um, so it kind of gives you a jumping off point, even if you don't use every single portion of that particular smart plan. So I'm going to go back to my smart plans here just to look at those two that I added. You can see they're showing up right here at the top. We have my new to Keller Williams and my Facebook lead follow-up. Okay. To edit that smart plan, I'm gonna come over to the right-hand side and click on the pencil. That's the edit button. Now keep in mind, we've just added this to our own smart plan library. We haven't sent this to anyone yet. This isn't going to anyone yet. You can add this and fully continue to edit it, and then you actually need to manually add the contact to it. So it's not going to go to anyone at this point. So don't panic. <laughs> okay. So you're going to see here on your screen on the left, we have all the steps of the smart plan that are in there. And on the right, you have these actions. So you're able to add additional steps. Okay. Some things we've talked about already creating a task or making a call, those are both tasks. Um, sending emails and sending text messages. We have talked about delays a little bit. So that's setting a time frame between two steps. We have the add to smart plan. So that's like the new to Keller Williams where it adds them to the quarterly call plan at the end. Okay, so you can link multiple smart plans together and you can restart a smart plan. So that's like the quarterly call plan, make a call, wait 90 days, repeat. So if it's something that you want to just do or send on a regular basis, you can use the restart smart plan. Okay. But let's look at the steps that are already in this plan before we start adding other things. Okay. So step one is make a call. So this is the Facebook lead follow-up one. So the first thing that happens is when you get a lead, you're going to get this task telling you to call them. You can change what the task actually comes up as depending on the ad that you're running. Okay. 
Number two is send text message. So right away, you can see I don't have a Twilio account. So it's telling me my Twilio account is not connected. Okay. You have two options with that. One is create a Twilio account and connect it. Um, or you can change this text to a text task. So instead of automatically texting them, you're just going to get a reminder on that day to text them. Okay, so if you don't want to commit to using Twilio yet, you just want to be reminded and use your own phone to text them. You can set it so it creates a text task instead. If you want to use that wording, I would recommend copying it because when you click create text task, it doesn't give you a description. So I could come in and paste that if I want to be reminded what I want to say because then this task is going to show up and I could just copy and paste this into my text and send it. Then we have our delay. So we've been told to call them. It sent them a text message or told us to text them. Now it's going to wait for four days before it moves on to the next step, which is send an email. Maybe I only want it to wait two days. I can change that right in here. The maximum is 369 days, so like a year. Minimum is one. Then we have the email. So you have your reply to email will show up there. That's what we looked at in our settings. The subject is here. And then we have the body of the email. So this is just a simple email. You can see we're on email type is simple. So that's just text. So as if you logged into Gmail and you're writing a message. Something really important with adding smart plans from the library is you can see this Matt guy has his full email signature written in here. Please make sure you change that to your own information. They'll be very confused if it still says their information. So even if you're adding something from the library, make sure you're reading it through to make sure they haven't put any of their own personal information. And if they have, you'll want to change it. And you just want to make sure the wording actually sounds like you as well. The other thing you'll notice is this in blue, this contact first name. These are called merge fields. And what this does is it actually pulls the information from the contact record to fill it in automatically in the email. So when Joe gets this email, it says, hey, Joe. Or if I send this email to Susan, it'll say, hey, Susan. It's filling in that field from the contact so that, you know, you could send this to 20 people and they all get it with their own name filled in. And it just feels much more personal than just, hi. <laughs> you know, it to them, it feels like you sat down and wrote it. It wasn't just an automated mass email. Um, Jessica, the, my question on that, though. Um, so, for instance, Joe. Like in my contact, because I, I wrote an offer with him, it might have said Joseph, right? Right. So I would have to, my contact name has to be the first name of whatever, like Christopher. It has to, if I wanted to say Chris, you got to change it in your contact, correct? Is that where correct. it's pulling the information from? Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, definitely something to watch out for. Especially if you know he's going to get that text or that email and be like, she's not going to call me Christopher. And I in an email right so that is something to pay attention to for sure um can you edit it when it's in there though like after like if it pulls the their formal first name but you call them something like a nickname or you know shorter version can you do that or no it has to be in the contact it has to be in the contact okay now if i made this smart plan and added them to it and it hadn't sent this email yet, I still have time to go edit that contact as long as that email hasn't sent yet. Um, so you can always go back and double check it. You'll more notice it when you're going to add the people to the smart plan. You might notice that the name is different and just remind yourself to go back and change that. All right, take out that email signature. Um, you have formatting here as well. Of course, your bold, italic, underline, all that's there. You also have the option to change the email to a design. So that's a whole different training, but in designs, there are email templates. So you could have, you know, a nice graphic email that you put in here. Um, you could hit designs, do select design, and it will bring you to all of the email designs you've created. Okay, if you haven't created any email designs, I would just stick with the simple. 
one. Jessica, so with um with designs, are you able to insert a Canva one in this? Um, so what you would do in Canva is create like an image, essentially. Right. And when you go to create your email design in designs, you just upload that image into the template to be that part of the email. Yeah, you do have to create the email template in design. So you would just be using it to pull different graphics in from Canva if you want those included. We got another text message here, another delay, make a call, another delay, send a text. Um, maybe I don't want it to be this long. You can delete steps. So maybe I don't want this last email to send out at all. Just below each step, you're gonna see the little gray X. I can just hit delete, remove that step. And now that is just gone. Okay, you can also delete this extra delay. Um, you can't have a delay and then nothing after it. And you also can't have two delays in a row. Can't delay. You can't delay a delay. <laughs> so as you're deleting things and rearranging things, you may get errors if you do have two delays back to back. Question for you, Jessica. Yep. Yeah. So I've done some of this and deleted the wrong one because I thought it was at the top instead of the bottom. So mm -hmm. thanks for pointing that out. Is there a way to undo a delete? Um, hmm, sort of, you would click this back button and cancel all of your changes <laughs> and start again. So as long as you have it hit save, it's going to yeah. refer you back to whatever it was when you started editing it. Right? Oh, I see. Okay. There's an auto save. Right. Yeah. So I could go back. It'll tell you to discard changes and then just reopen it and it will be back there. Um, but just keep in mind, every other change you've made will be gone as well. So yeah. if you have written some emails or texts and you need to do that, just go and copy and paste all the things you need to save. And then you can put it back in. But yeah, it will just cancel all the changes you've made since you last. Okay. You can also rearrange steps. So you do have the move up and move down. So when I want this one to go up, you just click clicking move up until it's in the right spot. Okay. So once you're happy with your smart plan, you can click save at the top. Oh, I did not complete all required fields. Name. Any other ones? Let's see. There we go. So now all changes have been saved. So at this point, if I went back, it wouldn't let me discard them. That would all be saved. Okay. Just quickly, I'll show you the, if I go back here, I'll show you the new Keller Williams one, just so you can see the messaging. Um, and like I said, you can add these smart plans. So where the preview didn't show you the full email, if you want to see what it says, just add the smart plan. If you don't like it, you can delete it. It doesn't actually send to anyone. Um, but this is the new to Keller Williams one. Again, it's a bit shorter, but it has that first email here. This one's nice. It just has the contact first name and it has your first name filled in to this email. Okay. Then we have the text. You can change it to a text task if you're not using Twilio. Delay. Have a make a call. Um, the nice thing with the call tasks is it when you mark it complete, it's actually going to log that you called someone. So when you look at your command, it will show you that you've been in touch with people. Um, and it lets you kind of give yourself a script here, which is already filled in, but you can change it. So if there's specific things you want to be reminded to talk to the person about when you call them, you can fill those in. Okay. And then the add to smart plan. So it directs them to that quarterly call plan. I might have a different smart plan I want to change it to or send them to. So you can do that there. Um, you can add that to any of them just by clicking add to smart plan at the end. Okay. We also have the smart plan name here at the top. So you may want to rename it if you have multiple smart plans with small differences. You, know, you might have a past client and a current client smart plan. But you want to make sure that you name them accordingly.
Any questions about editing the SMART plans? Okay. Now that you have a SMART plan and you're ready to send it to people, how do you actually add people to it and send it to them? There's a few different ways. From this screen, I can actually do it by clicking this add contact button right beside the save button. This is going to pull your full database. You can search by name. If there's a specific person you're looking for. But remember I mentioned tags will make your life really easy, easy. I can also search by tags. So maybe I want it to go to all of my 2023 buyers. When you filter by tag, you're going to get everyone with that specific tag, and you can hit select all. And then send a smart plan to everyone who has that particular tag. So that's where tags make your life a little easier, especially if there's a specific group of people you're sending this to. It might just be one contact, and that's fine. If it's a post-closing follow-up, you're probably just adding them as you hit closing day, so you will never really be bulk adding people. Okay. But if it's your new to Keller Williams one, you want your entire database, you can just hit select all and select everyone. So once you've selected who you're sending that to, you would click add to smart plan. Then you're gonna see this screen. So you have the option to start it now, or start it on a following date, okay? So if I start now, they're just getting the email right now. But I could set this to start on the 11th, for example. This is helpful. Again, maybe you have a birthday email. You have one email in there as your set, and you want to just schedule it to go out on their actual birthday. You would choose the start date so that they get the email on that specific day. You may also use this for holiday emails, like a Merry Christmas email or a Happy Halloween email. You could have that all set up and then just schedule it to start on that specific day. So if it was Halloween, I would go and schedule it for the 31st of October. If I was to have multiple people on this file, I just select a few people. Uh, yeah, it will tell you if you have any errors. So if you're doing Twilio and they don't have a phone number, it's gonna tell you right away before you add them. We'll add them anyway. Um, but when you add multiple people to a smart plan at the same time, you can also stagger it. So if it's something that doesn't really matter what day they get it, it's just a message you wanna go out, you can stagger it. So. Like I said, it's only one contact per day is going to get it. So if I add 10 people, it's going to, over 10 days, those 10 people are going to get it. This is really mostly helpful if you're adding like 200 people to a smart plan, like maybe you're new to Keller Williams one. You don't want to get 200 replies all at once because then that's, you've just created a very big job for yourself of getting back to 200 people in a timely manner. You might only want to have to get back to 10 people. So if you add 200 people, and stagger it for 10 contacts per day, then it's gonna break it up much more for you. Oh, I only have three on there. <laughs> okay. So that will just sort of spread that out and make it a little more manageable. Question on the start date. Yeah. When interval of things go out, is there a time that you can select? No. Or when does it go out? Not at this time. <laughs> It is in the, the pipeline of a time-based smart plan. Um, but as of right now, they'll, they do go within sort of business hours. Um, okay. so I think it's eight to four central, which is like 10 to six our time. Yeah. Okay. Usually early in the morning is when it'll go out. Okay. That. Um, there is another way from the contacts, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, but another, another way you can set up the smart plan is by using a trigger event. So this is still going to use your tags to determine who a smart plan is going to go to. But if it's something, I'll use the post-closing example. Maybe you have a series of emails or texts that go out 
starting on closing day for a set period of time. I could set a specific tag to trigger that smart plan to start. So, maybe you have a closed tag. We'll say it's this one. <laughs> this tag is now the trigger to start this smart plan. So I'd set this up. And now going forward, if I have a contact and I just add that closed tag, the smart plan starts. So it's a little more automated. You don't have to go into each contact and remember to add them to this specific smart plan. You just have to remember to add that specific tag and that smart plan will go. Does that make sense? So yeah, that's good for those like regular processes, like after closing, um, things that you know you can easily just go in and tag for to trigger that to go out, um, that you wouldn't need to go through and edit first, that you know can just blindly go out. <laughs> that's what the trigger is for. Sorry, can you just like really quick just say that again, that trigger part? <laughs> the, yeah. So the tag what? acts as a trigger. Yeah. So you set up the smart plan with that tag as the trigger. Going forward, any contacts where you go and add that tag, it's going to trigger the smart plan to start. Okay. So it's more for those regular processes that you're doing sort of over and over and doesn't change, like post-closing. Or even like a new, a new buyer, maybe it's a checklist you send them of documents that you need. You can just use that tag you add the tag to the contact and the smart plan sends. Instead of you having to go into the contact, search for the smart plan, add them to the smart plan. Okay. Just be careful too, once you add a trigger, every contact that ever gets that tag will get that smart plan. So just be mindful, you may wanna create a specific tag for that that you're remembering to add and not one of the generic tags that you're using for everyone. Other way to add people to smart plans is directly from the contacts applet. So you can do it one by one or you can do it in bulk. So if you are sending it to your entire database, this is an easy way to do it. So what I can do is I can actually click the checkbox at the top of the list of my contacts, go to select bulk action and add to smart plan. Okay, so that's if you have a full list of people you want to send it to. Or you can go through and select individual people from the contacts. You can do one by one there. This is just nice because you can set up your view so you can see that they have the email, the phone number, they have the correct tag, and you can select them while having a full overview of your database at the same time instead of just a list of names. And also open up contacts one by one and add them to smart plans one by one from here. You can see from within the contact over on the right, we have a smart plans tab. So I can actually see that this contact right now is on the biweekly neighborhood nurture. So that's really helpful if someone reaches out and says, stop sending me emails and you can't remember what smart plan you've added them to, go to their contact record and it will show it here. If you want to remove them from that smart plan, you're just hitting the trash can. If you want to add them to a smart plan, you're just clicking add to smart plan and you're getting a whole list of your smart plans here. So once you have your smart plans built, you don't really have to go back into the smart plans applet unless you need to change them. Everything else can be done from the contacts. Any questions about adding people to smart plans? No? The last step is to track your smart plans. So in the reports applet, which is the little graph, you can actually see you know, the number of texts and emails you've sent. Um, I can go to this emails tab here at the top. I haven't sent very many this month. Um, you can go by month. So I could go back to July, 2022. Yeah, 
So you can see I had a lot of email sends that month. So it'll show you actually how many were delivered, how many were undelivered. This is something to pay attention to. This might mean that you had the incorrect email. There's a reason why they're not being delivered. Um, so I could click view details on undelivered. And it will give you a list of the emails, whether it came from smart plans or campaigns, what the subject was, so you know which email it was. Um, so it just gives you kind of a hint to double check those email addresses. You can also see unsubscribed. So it will show you sort of a list of people that did unsubscribe from you. Um, and it will also tell you how many, again, were delivered, how many actually opened the email, how many clicked within the email. So if you have links, so yes, I can see if you open my emails or not. <laughs> um, and how many replied. Okay, so it just lets you track your stats there. Maybe you have a very good open rate, but not a very good reply rate. You have to work on your call to action or having, you know, giving them something to actually reply to instead of just a mass email of information. Give them a reason to reply to you. Okay. So that's just how you can see that info. Again, if you're only using smart, if you're using both smart plans and email campaigns, you may want to see one or the other. So you can filter just to see smart plans or just campaigns. Same thing with texts as well. It won't show you like the open or anything like that, but it will show you how many credits you've used if you are using Twilio, um, how many are rolling over, how many texts you've sent and received, things like that. So just be aware that this is here. We don't talk about the reports a whole lot, but you may be looking for that info. So that is where you find it. Okay. Any final, qu any questions at all? Anything you want me to show you or go over that we didn't cover? No, that's just very good. Perfect. So I will put the link, I'll put this in the chat. Um, I'll go here. So answers.kw.com is like your Google of KW. There is a whole section of smart plans, um, smart plan help articles specifically. So basically everything you might have a question about in smart plans, there is a step-by-step -step guide for it. So how to create a custom smart plan, how to publish a smart plan, how to delete a smart plan. Um, if I click on any of these, it will give you step-by-step -step instructions exactly how to do it. Okay. I put the link to that in the chat. Um, I'll also put the link to my 12 days of command videos. These will be updated prior to the holidays because we've had some changes. Um, but this is the video series I did around the holidays last year. And I did an entire video on smart plans on day three. Um, so I will put the link to that in here. The main thing that's outdated now is the campaigns, the Facebook and Instagram ads. That process has completely changed as you've seen my many emails come out. Um, so if you are going through the full thing, just ignore that video, skip day eight for now. Um, it will be re-recorded and put into an updated version of this prior to me leaving for a year. So, <laughs> okay. You can also just search on YouTube. So if you're looking for you know, PW Open House Smart Plan. Okay. There are tons of other agents, other tech trainers like me who are making videos and posting them on YouTube. So just because we haven't done a training or posted a video about it, I guarantee you it exists uh, from one of these other sources. So just search for whatever you're looking to do in command and you'll find a video on it. Okay, lots of different ones there. So it's my best best suggestion if you can't find something, just search it on YouTube. <laughs> There's definitely a video on it already. All awesome, right. thanks so much, Jessica. No problem. No final questions, nothing else? No, what I love about it, Jessica, is it's like, it's so amazing all the things you can do because when you watch you break it down. It's very simple, yet I, it can be very overwhelming because there's so much that it can do. But yeah. I think if you just focus on 
the couple things that you want to do and dive into it. Like you said, you can just YouTube to figure out how to do it. Yeah. So I, it's a pretty amazing system. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely start if you've never touched smart plans before, start with those Keller Williams ones, add the quarterly call plan, have those reminders. Um, if you're doing Facebook ads, you don't even need to use one of these big plans that goes for like six months, you can create one or two emails and just have those sending out just to have that sort of introduction for you. Um, there's lots of ways to, to simplify it for sure. But if anyone has questions as you're going through it and as you're working on smart plans, just send me an email or give me a call. Um, send me screenshots if there's something not working um, and I'll help as best I can. Thank you so much, Jess. So good again. No problem. All right. So this was recorded. I'll put this up on YouTube so you can watch it back if you want to. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Awesome. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank so, you. Yeah. Have a great day, guys. You too. You too. Bye.